So um, today's guest is Betty Campbell. She's um, a former writer, fashion editor, and contributing editor, as well as a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. She is the author of My Journey in His Hands and Symbiotic Business. Now nonprofits and for profits can oh sorry, how nonprofits and for profits can change the world together. I want to read that. <laughs> Betty also serves as the executive director for Expos Hope and as a consultant on corporate philanthropy and nonprofit community connection. My journey in his hands details Betty's life, including the loss of her mother, the domestic abuse she endured, endured, and her time in the sex industry. Her time there led to her, her to found a ministry, so she serves as the executive director of Expose Hope, a nonprofit that reaches trafficked persons and those in adult entertainment with services, mentoring, and connections to housing, addiction programs, counseling, resume services, and more. Expose Hope is currently operating in four states. Expose Hope reaches into the community by running the All About Cities site, where community members and businesses may connect and create relationships. The nonprofit also hosts a complimentary networking group called All About Big Work and a pod vod vodcast, is that how you say it? Vodcast called Talking Business. Please welcome Betty. So um, I loved um, your opening uh, quote. I love this. And I might have not gotten exactly right because the writing is the same time now. Um, you have not lived today until you help someone connect. Perfect. Well, good to you about. So, um, Expose Hope began about eight years ago. Um, I thought it was going to be a once a thing. We're going to go into clubs, let women know they were cared about. That was it. That's all I hoped to do. But we very quickly began getting phone calls like, hey, I need help. Hey, I have an addiction. Hey, my kids have been picked up by DHS. Hey, I got me done last thing. And so we realized we needed programs and services for them. And so at that point, I was running Exposo through my business. My business donated every gift that we took, and I took a good write off on it. Um, and I got to feel good about what I was doing. And I thought, if one more minute, if one year changes her life, this will all be worth it. It's a little part time gig, it's just great. Um, but within three months, I was working eight to 10 hours a day. Um, and then I had to run my business still. <laughs> so I was just overwhelmed. So we ended up selling the business and launching full time into a 501c3 nonprofit that would reach out to those who are in the sex industry. Now, why does this matter to you? So the sex industry is one of the most pervasive industries. In fact, the most pervasive industry in the world. It makes more money than gun money. Okay, we just served past gun running by about three million dollars a year. So it is in the billions of what people earn through um, selling other people across the world. And it's not just in the countries that you can think of when you hear this Africa, the Philippines, that's really bad. Actually, the number one country, the number one city in the world for trafficking right now, the metro area is Portland. We outdo everybody. We are number one for child trafficking, number one for women, and number three for men. Most of our women begin in the life at about age 12 or 13. That's when the rumors get a hold of them, usually through this. So everything that you read about, don't let them go to the mall, because there are traffickers there. They're going to pick them up at Walmart, and if they leave a thing on the door, that's not how they're getting out. They get them right through this. For all the little apps that they're on, for all the little communication and also. And they manipulate these children, because that's what they are, into believing that they can't live without this person. This person is the only one who cares. Your mom and dad don't get it. I get it. I care about it. I believe it. Let them know about me because, you know, it's not important that they know. I just want to. And so they work with those teenage children. Now you're probably thinking your boys are pretty safe. Well, girls started about age 12 to 13. Most young boys are manipulating them to get in the life about age nine. So, and that's not that youngest that we've seen. We've seen babies that have been taking and taken in rings. Um, so understand that they are actually creating children to be born into this. And that is happening here in the Portland Metro area. Okay. 
So what does it mean in your business or your community? Well, the problem is for every one of those, they are going to grow up. They're going to stay in line and they're going to create more children who are going to be the line. They're either going to be a drug dealer or a prostitute, whatever they want to be. Um, so, and just because we have more people, it's even a big help. Oh, like, make them go see whatever they want. It's legal in, in Oregon. We have hundreds of places where there is more legal, there is more illegal. Because illegal actually leads to the illegal. It is like the double A team, you know, for the herbs and the men. That's what they are. They're the hops. And every dollar that goes into one of those little strings is keeping her there longer so that she can be picked up by a by a trafficker. Our traffickers don't look like what you think either. Our traffickers are people who you would see every day and we do not Okay, now we do have this trafficker that is in North Portland that is of color or that is Hispanic and they're running their own people. But by far, that has been inflicted by people who are bankers, attorneys, teachers, principals, school bus drivers, pastors. So you have to really be careful with your children. You have to know where they're at. You have to be watching the social media. And absolutely. <laughs> So I'm supposed to have started helping to help this one girl, but in the last seven and a half years, we have taken more than 80 women out in the Portland metro area. We have helped two men in the Portland metro area, and then we began to expand. So in Ben, we've taken out four women, and they have only one club. Um, and we have taken four out in Salem, and we are now in Great Falls, and Castle from Florida, which is where the campus is. And we were very active when the Super Bowl was there. Um, we usually use safe and sober homes when a lady is a place of business. What do they order for their pets? Food for children that often belong to the trucker. You won't see your kid again. And during COVID, there was a moratorium on COVID. You couldn't kick anybody out for not paying rent. But if you were a prostitute, your kid had no problem kicking you out of being a that much. And if you could hear the story that I heard when girls called me terrified, they were breaking your heart. The things that were happening to their children, even they didn't break on that much, is just absolutely horrific. So housing became very important to us. And the unfortunately, because the moratorium of the safe and sober housing was full. So where do I put them? And they said, boy, if we had our own house, I would stack them like four foot. I would get them away from the traveling way now. But I didn't have much. So in November, we made an agreement with another nonprofit to rent a house for the year. And that house became Kids Place, which is named after a young woman that we took out of life, but we couldn't get her to leave her domestic violating partner. And she kept going back to him. And every time it went worse, and the last time I spoke to her about two days, um, I, I, just, I spoke to her one day, and about two days later, I, when I spoke to her, she said, if I had an option, Betty, if there was somewhere I could go with my two kids, and there was somewhere safe that I could be where I could start all over, I wouldn't go back, but what do you want me to do? And I had nothing like that. She had been to the safe and sober homes, and they are very sketchy. Uh, some people there have, my girls can have addictions, but the minute they're out, they get to go away. Usually within a week, my girls are completely clean and safe. In an addiction home, it's often up and down and up and down. And they didn't want their kids to And that was her issue. Two days later, her husband ran on her and her children. So we made the decision that we never be uh, ever another girl we talked to. We said, I have nowhere to go. So we opened Kim's place. We got it in November. It was a wrap. Um, and now we created, we created that home house with trauma free So there are trauma friendly colors on every wall. Every bedroom is beautiful. It is a gorgeous place to live. Long bottom coffee provides coffee to this world. We have a business that provides all of their laundry detergent. It is like heaven when you walk in the door. We opened the door. We said, Welcome to the home, because this is home. And I can tell you how many girls have told us, you don't know what it meant for the word home. I haven't had a home since 10 or 14. 
So it's been an amazing process. And I just got a text from one of our ladies. She's now our house. When she put it to me, she did three days out of the hospital. She was like, she had to try to kill herself in the way back. So it's sometimes the only way they got to get out. She was still good for meth, and she was very, she is now our house manager, and she's a leader. She works for a company drug testing people. Mostly at the airport, she goes out and tests white food. And she just was promoted and given a completely big. So that is what our, our agency has been able to do for these women. Um, it's an amazing thing that we do. So we need help from community partners. We need you to A, know about us. Uh, so that you know when you see or hear about somebody that is trapping, that you know you can call us and we will take care of that one. If she doesn't live with us, we've got other services, connections to all kinds of services that she's going to need. Because believe it or not, the women in this community have a phrase of PTSD in the community is the best. So we give them PTSD work, we can give them mentors. So there is so much that we can do that other agencies don't do. Right now, we are the only eight beds in Oregon for traveling. So we really need your help. Every other organization started on points, and when they get a grant, they start a house. When that grant finds out, they shut the house. And these women end up back on the street. And their posts are even so horribly because that's the only place they have to go back. So we made the decision we would never do that. We would go to respond. There were small ways, small community partners who get behind us, and people who give us 10, 20, 35, $100 a month so that we would have stable income in this house with so much fun and we can get more. So that is our goal. We have an event coming up uh, called Boots to Stilettos. We love it because if it's country western, you wear your boots, we're gonna stop out traveling. Every penny that we make here helps these girls stay in house, helps them get jobs, helps them get addictions help, and helps them change their life. Mm -hmm. um, it's on September 8th, and we would love for you guys to get better um, sponsor is here. We also um, are about to launch a thing called Business Gets Traveling. We would love to partner with you, Brother Reed, to do that. Uh, Business Against Traveling is um, an organization that will fund more housing for these women. Right now, nationwide, there are 800 beds that we know of that have been documented. We documented in the iceberg 6,500 women and 3,000 children in Oregon. So that are being traveled. And across the country, there's only 800 beds for homes. So we need to get more housing. We need to change our lives so that this pattern stops. I want the Portland metro area to be known as a place we don't traffic and we're going to find it. But it's not comfortable to travel. Where girls can come and get fewer instead of being known as the number one site of traffic. Um, but business against traffic will offer a couple of things. It's going to offer a partnership between business and our organization so that you can have fun with what we do. I think we're working on a website that will be called Businesses of Trafficking. People can go there and search for businesses that are opposed to trafficking. There will be a sticker to go on your door and write a chamber sticker that will say, In here you are safe. Any woman can walk in. Plus, people like me who love businesses that are anti trafficking, we tend to shop there more. And we're going to provide free education to every single organization so they can be fed back into their whole business about what is trafficking, how to keep your quick break and safe, and how do you know what to do when somebody walks through your door and that person's traffic? How do you know the point? Because things are seen on the internet most of the time. But we love what we do. We have done so, so many amazing things just through our volunteer services. We have currently no pay staff. My goal is to be able to bring on paid executive director in the next three years so that I can retire so that she, this community can serve someone on and on and on and on, unfortunately. 
Forest Grove is one of our, I joined the achievement here because it's one of the fastest growing areas. Our kids are traveling way out of high school. So we can't have it. We need to be offering services and we need to be offering a leg up to young women and young boys who feel there is no future here. And that's how they did in this. It's the same way that they drag into the kitchen and have arrangements. And that they have is greatness in them. So if you want to do something today, get back to somebody who can't afford to get back to you. But one day they will, because one day their kids will be community partners. One day their kids will be rotary. <laughs> one day their kids will be in the chamber because you changed their life. So that is kind of what we do. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Various in the south, but then it's in Washington. Yeah. And then I'm going to disclose it. Yes. yes. And you can find it on Facebook and we're going to just play it for you. And we also have a beautiful video of Step Radio that you probably can see. It. So, um, a beautiful video of the search for you. So, how do you do this house? We can put on our Oh, that would be great. You know, it's fun. Currently, are there women and children in the homes? Or currently, we have two children, um, and then we have women. And then we don't have a place for men because our, in fact, to walk into our house as a man, you have to have one of our staff members with you because so many of these women are so traumatized by men. So even a parole officer has to call and get um, a connector to go with him or her. When we walk in the door, we say, hi, ladies, this is Betty. I'm bringing a gentleman guest with me. So they know when they can stay in their rooms if they choose if they're there um, or they can come out. So it depends on their level of trauma. How long do they normally stay? We utilize a one-year program grid, but they had a couple move out earlier. Um, we actually one that we exited more part of Georgia because their PIP was so pervasive and kept finding them at places they worked. So we moved them out of state and we took two girls from out of state. So um, we trade off sometimes like that. What's the, what's the overarching success rate of the these people who are who are basically some sex slaves in the sex trade in this trafficking trade of getting them out and getting them to life that would not include them. I mean, is it like one out of every five or ten that actually make it or what? The ladies that we have worked with. Um, and and understand we're a small organization. We're only in the Portland metro. You know, we started in Portland metro, so I don't. And our others are not keeping complete stats yet. But we have worked with two men, and both men got out. Um, we've worked with. Okay, so we have helped. Like during COVID, yeah, the number went way up. So we have helped over three hundred people. Before that, we had helped in that we were at. Um, 120 that they called us for help, eight of those to not know. So um, we have a really good success rate, but our success rate is even a lot of our ladies come out of the life who are in the volunteer force. Um, so they can actually say, I've done this, I know it's hard, you can do it. Um, plus, we've been really blessed with the business community. I mean, we call it like, I could grow up doing the house. She needs a job. There's a lot of man in most of that said, Hey, are any of you both looking right now? I don't know. So I said, Oh, wait, wait, I've got a job for you right now. So people are coming to us and getting house and safe. And then getting a job is a huge thing. We try to put layers on them. We say that what happened in Darwin and the children is the fact that society was ripped out from under them. When we were kids, there was a fabric to the society, right? We all did. Your aunts and uncles were part of your life. Your school teachers were part of your life. You know, your neighbors took care of each other. That got ripped out of these people. So we're trying to put it back string by string and we a fabric again. So first we try to connect them if we can and the families are not in trafficking, back to the families. 
So they were taken very young away from their families to pray with them. Then we try to connect them to some place of worship, whatever that is for them. So if they're used to candles and and hymns, then that's where we send them. If they're not from, we will connect them to that. We will connect them to where they came from, that they are comfortable with. Now we have two. Then we connect them back to the businesses that in this community. And then we connect them to our volunteers and we connect them to the commissioner of the horse. So now they walk to the I'm going to ask the follow up. So, do you say that Portland or Portland metro area, the Bright Mountain area, is the number one spot? Is it a number one spot for trafficking because it's organic coming out of Oregon, or is it because it doesn't sit on I 5? It's because we sit on I 5 and up and down with the drugs, and we track the children and traffic women. So, when it gets too hot for a child here, and people start noticing that child, they move them to Seattle, they move them to LA, they move them to we, we have a very pervasive route well, between Maricopa, Arizona, and Portland, where they'll take children and women and drugs back and forth. Um, so, yeah, that's part of it. And we sit in with a major airport that's international. So, we have hotels around our airport. It's not all they do is supply rooms to very high end customers from Asia who come in. Fly in, raise a child, get back on their plane, and go back. So you know it's uh, it it is part of where we live and you know, the system that we live within. So how much are you working with the local law enforcement? We work with them. We are on the trafficking, all of the trafficking bureaus. Uh, also, Salem, Mary Kelly. We have trained um, Salem's parole officers. We have trained uh, the parole officers in Washington County. Uh, we are going out to train out the police in Plaza County. Uh, so, we are very excited. Who will be in charge of the program? We try. <laughs> <laughs> we can't always, but I'd rather have you training. But do you do our so they find us a lot of ways. We're on all the usual places that they go, TikTok and all of that, and we have on the side that says, hey, we, we don't connect him's place to expose hope because expose hope goes to clubs and they would not let us back So we say, hey, if you're if you're traffic, um, we want to connect with you. This is this is Kim's place, and it has its own phone number, separate from Exposo. We also get girls from Exposo, we're just looking for a way out. So they call us because we leave. We, I think we have about 20,000 cars in the Portland Metro. Um, and then um, the police agencies bring them, um, DHS brings them, so we get that from all of them. And we are usually, oh, well, right now I've got three more. That's very unusual. We are usually full up and in the wings. One place. No, 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 and we have this little bar We do something similar when we go to 10th Street, Hillsborough, and um, you have a high five in there, and we're cool, and I'm um, taking Second Street in Portland. We take makeup that is branded and supposed to be done. Um, so our number is on it, and we have the So it's like just regular makeup. That's what you want to do. We say we have a study here. Yes. I'd rather not. It's really not your business. <laughs> so that is what we do. We would love to partner with you in any way we can, whether that's training you, whether that's um, helping you reach the community about this, you know, whatever it is. We wish there were 90 more organizations like us. Um, I tried everything, but I thought surely there was, um, but there just isn't. 
um, the a lot of the agencies that we work with actually, their vision is different than ours. We want to see a world working. We want to see a moving forward. They're required to do that. They have the UA. They have to be clean um, in order to stay in our house. Because let's face it, you and I know business owners and community members that you have to do those things if you want to move forward in life and get out of that life. Your, your mind has to be clear. But so many of the organizations that do anything, traffic women, have no problem with them coming in put in stone. We don't agree with that because I don't think she can make a clear decision. Um, and uh, so they'll, well, we'll take them like that. We want their UA to go down. We want them to stay there. We want them to work. Um, because there's pride to work, there's pride to be able to be friends. So our girls do be their head and the first couple of months. So we do require them to do that. But we would love to see you all at our events. Um, it's been fun. We've got a DJ coming. We've got a for dinner. Um, the tables are 500, 750, and 1,000. Eight seats to a table. We're going to have that kind of fun. We'd love to see you. I've got some pictures of some of our girls up here. Um, there's a couple of pictures of Kim's place. Would love to, you know, have a group for them. If you want more information, I have a sign up sheet where I can put you up. Thank you.